The updated third-gen Honda CR-V was launched for sales in 2007 and had quite a bit different features from its more rugged predecessors. The CR-V is wider, lower, and shorter. Honda got rid of the tailgate that opened to the side and instead had a standard rear lift gate, and they also removed the rugged tire mount on the tailgate. Honda basically took this CRV from a pretty cool adventure rig to a daily driver, and there's nothing wrong with that. We cooked the tried and true K24 inline for a motor in the USA, but every car and manufacturer has issues, and Honda is no exception. Today, I'll be going over the common issues of the third gen Honda CRV from 2007 to 2011 to help you diagnose potential issues or help you with your buying experience. Now, I'm not saying don't buy the car, I'm just here to educate you. Let's get started. If you notice red fluid on the ground, then that's most likely your transmission fluid. It is fairly common to have the transaxle seal leaking fluid. Place the car on jack stands, remove the axles, and replace the seal. It is much easier said than done. And it's definitely possible to replace it in your driveway. Now, if you end up leaking too much fluid, you will start to have harsh and rough shifting. So if you're experiencing that, definitely check your transmission fluid. There could be another cause for rough and hesitating shifts, and that is basically dirty transmission fluid. Try to flush the transmission fluid with the appropriate Honda recommended trans fluid, drive the car a bit, then flush the fluid again. Do that process three total times. If that doesn't fix your issue, you may have to replace the transmission solenoid. There is a clutch pressure solenoid that tends to be the main solenoid odors replaced to fix this issue. But usually a good flush will get the job done. Be sure to replace your fluids at the correct intervals to prevent annoying issues like this. In 2010, Honda recalled over 1.5 million vehicles due to the secondary shaft in the transmission braking when drivers quickly and aggressively shift from reverse to drive. This affected the CRV from 07 to 2010, so be sure that recall has been fixed or be prepared to take it in for the software update it requires. This would basically tear up the transmission and prevent it from working properly. If you try to turn on the AC and cold air doesn't come out, then you may have a bad AC compressor. You can track down fuses and relays to see if they are your culprit, but it's almost always the actual compressor with these third gen Honda CRVs. It won't be an easy replacement because you do need to have the refrigerant professionally removed. And the compressor is located in a very precarious location that is somewhat difficult to get to, but it's definitely possible to do by a DIY person with patience. I'll have links down below to most of these parts for your convenience. The CRV can develop an issue where the rear differential shudders and has groaning noise during turns. This is due to the diff fluid deteriorating over time. The fluid should be changed pretty routinely with Honda dual pump diff fluid about every 24 months or 24,000 miles. Doing it routinely shouldn't be an issue because it is easy to do. Grab a drain pan, get under the car, move the drain bolt, drain the oil, and add new oil. You can also attach a soap pump to the bottle and pump in the oil into the diff, which makes the process much easier. If the car's electronics turn on when you try to turn over the key but receive a no start, perhaps it's your starter failing. You should hear the starter try to crank the engine, and if you don't, then this is most likely a culprit. You can try to temporarily fix the starter and get it working which is located in front of the engine and you can get to it by removing the plastic guards under the car and hit it with a blunt object like a hammer. That should get you going to where you need to go, but you should definitely replace it because that will only work so many times before it fails completely. Many owners report noise coming from the suspension as they drive over bumps or take turns. One main culprit is the sway bar stabilizer end leaks. You can test them by trying to move the sway bar itself with a screwdriver and see if it makes noise or has play like this one. If it does, you need to replace the sway bar end link. The end links and struts are both known to fail prematurely and cause a lot of noise. The windshield wiper motor does tend to fail, but it's definitely not an overly common issue. Although 
watching the process might seem a bit daunting, it's actually quite easy. So if those motors have failed, don't be too alarmed. There are many great tutorials on replacing them on YouTube. There have been many owners who reported that their 2010 and 2011 Honda CRVs burn oil due to sticking piston rings. I guess Honda started to pop out a bad batch in 2010 and 2011. You can do an oil consumption test if it's within warranty, but it seems that Honda is trying to dismiss most of these complaints. So be sure to top off your oil like you do gas if you're experiencing this problem. Also expect the catalytic converter to clog up fairly quickly. Hopefully you don't live in California with this problem because catalytic converters are pretty expensive. The door locking in these cars like to malfunction. They don't lock when you want them to and they randomly unlock while driving. Then ultimately, the locks stop working altogether. These usually fail around 80,000 miles and cost around $400 to replace at a mechanic, which is why you should take the time and replace them yourself. Watch a good video, A1 Auto has a fantastic tutorial, and be patient. It will be worth buying the appropriate tools and putting in the few hours to save a few hundred dollars you'll be spending at a mechanic. And if another one fails, which most likely it will, you already have the tools and know-how to place it in the future. The CRV comes with the K24 motor, a proven and reliable motor. With good maintenance, it can easily last well over 200,000 miles. It does have a timing chain instead of a timing belt, and the chain seems very reliable. But I will say the first gen and the second gen CRV are still my favorite. I have videos talking about them as well, and I'll have them linked down below. My main goal is to help people with their cars and motivate you all to save money and work on your own car if the job allows it. If this video helped you out, share it with a friend, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Chris Automotivate. Always appreciate and respect one another. I'll see you next time.